You have to see this. Well, it said over 75% of parents show their kids' data on social media. Eight out of 10 parents have followers they've never met. Hey, Mom. Hey, Dad. It's me, Ella. Well, a, a digital version of me. Just a bit older. Amazing what technology can do these days, isn't it? Yeah. All you need are a couple of pictures, like the ones you share on social media, where they can be taken and used by everybody. I know, for you, these pictures are just memories. But for others, they are data. And for me, maybe the beginning of a horrible future. A future where my identity can be stolen, just like that. Where I can go to prison for things that I would never do. Imagine my credit score being destroyed, Dad. Or my voice copied to scam you, Mom. Mom, I'm in trouble. I, I need you to send me money, please. I don't want to become a... A meme <laughs> humiliated by everyone at school. Kill yourself, you f loser. Whoa. And I certainly don't want this. Oh no. What you share online is like a digital footprint that will follow me around for the rest of my life. I'm telling you this because I know you love me and would never do anything to harm me. So please, Mom. Please, Dad. Protect my virtual privacy. Wow. Long gone are the days where it was safe to post an innocent picture of your child on Facebook. Well, was it ever safe? Heck, it isn't safe for any of us, unfortunately, to have our face on social media. But as adults, we can protect ourselves in ways that we can't do for our kids. But what we can do is minimize or limit their use of social media as well as how often, if at all, that we put them on our social media. Here's what would happen if you found out you were immortal. From zero to 25 years old, your life is normal and you live like everybody else. At 25, you get into a car accident that should have killed you, but you miraculously survive. This event has changed your life forever. At 30, you discover that you are in fact immortal and cannot die. This realization is both exciting and terrifying as you realize that you will outlive everyone you know and love. To cope with this, you start experimenting on yourself. You begin to do things that were once impossible for you, such as jumping off cliffs and diving to the ocean floor. You push your physical limits and revel in the fact that you can survive anything. At 35, you notice that your friends and family are starting to lose their hair and get wrinkles while you remain forever young. At 45, you decide to indulge in anything and everything you want. You no longer have to worry about your health as you will never die. At 60, you are one of the most famous people in the world and on social media for never aging. Scientists take notice and you volunteer for research. You spend all of your free time traveling the world and experiencing new things. At 80, you begin to procrastinate on everything and dive deep into every distraction and pleasure out there. After all, you have forever ahead of you. At 85, you decide to watch everything that's on Netflix. You spend 12 hours a day watching shows and movies, taking eight full years to finish. At 93, you become bored with everyday life and start doing dangerous things such as skydiving without a parachute and putting yourself in cages with wild animals. At 100 years old, the government recruits you for dangerous missions that would be certain death 
for others. At 110 years old, you have traveled to every country on Earth in the name of helping people and doing tasks that are too dangerous for normal people. At 123 years old, you are verified as the oldest person ever to live, and you still look 25. At 150 years old, you decide to run for president and become the president. The other candidates didn't even stand a chance. By 200 years old, you have learned every major language and have read almost every relevant book and are the richest person in the world. People come from far and wide to seek your advice. By 250 years old, you have done almost everything meaningful that you could have ever imagined and become severely depressed. You've been married 10 times, but each relationship ends in heartbreak as you watch your loved ones age and die. It's impossible to overdose, so you spend the next 10 years drinking your problems away. By 275 years old, you are starting to look for ways to not be immortal anymore, but you fail to find a way out. By 300 years old, something clicks and you have gained full enlightenment. You realize that you have a unique opportunity to help others make a meaningful impact on the world. You start a new religion and preach your message of love and compassion everywhere around the world. 30 years later, when you are 330, you are kidnapped and subjected to cruel experiments from people who want to be immortal just like you. After 20 years of being a prisoner, you finally escape and vow to use your immortality to help others and prevent such atrocities from happening again. After 500 years, you see that society has forgotten all about you and no one believes you when you tell them your age. You live a life in nature away from humans. Few still tell your stories from previous generations, word of mouth like you are a mythical creature. After a thousand years, you re-enter society and help them grow at light year speed with your knowledge. You become a respected advisor and mentor to leaders across the globe. After 2,000 years, humanity has made huge leaps in science and space exploration solely due to your knowledge and experience. You are hailed as a hero and a legend. After nearly 5,000 years, you are officially the oldest living organism on the planet, passing a bristlecone pine tree for the title. After 10,000 years, there is no more hunger or poverty thanks to you. Your teachings have transformed society and created a world where everyone has equal opportunities. After 100,000 years, you are old enough to witness evolution and humans no longer look like the humans that you were born with. You marvel at the progress of the human race and the wonders of the world. After one million years, the earth is dying and the time of humanity is ending. You watch as the last humans die out and reflect on the impact that you've had on their world. For one billion years, you drift through space, contemplating the meaning of life, finding lifeless planets that started off as interesting, but eventually, after seeing so many of them, they all start to feel the same. For another 10 billion years, you continue to drift through space, contemplating the meaning of life. You knew with your immortality that you would be able to explore space for long periods of time without dying. During this time, you have found many other civilizations, but none of it matters anymore. You have found nothing that piques your interest or is different. You are dead inside, but you are still holding on to hope that there is more to life than what you have seen so far in your 10 billion years. You continue to drift aimlessly through space for 500 trillion years until the light from all the stars go out and the universe experiences its heat death. Wow. Well, you think about it, that was kind of incredible, but obviously those things wouldn't necessarily happen to every individual that would experience immortality. Some people will have somewhat more unique experiences. Maybe everyone that would experience that degree of a billion plus lived years of immortality would experience all of the same things that he spoke of, but maybe at different time frames, different timelines of their life. Even then, I think that would only happen to decent people, right? Decent human beings like the majority of us. Now for those who are evil, yeah, they would have a completely different experience than what he ran off here. And for those who are really good people, they probably would use all, if not most, of that life inspiring generation after generation. But I enjoyed that. That was really good. Now, leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. And I'm going to catch y'all in the next one. See ya.